and by living in relatively small communities spread out over vast areas, Africans could limit the level of malaria transmission. It was an extraordinary achievement. But the Europeans understood little of the Africans' way of life. They built settlements by the rivers and lakes they used for water, in places infested by mosquitoes. Thousands died. So it seemed that the tropics had defeated European guns, germs, and steel and that Africans had emerged triumphant. They had evolved a complex civilization well suited to the tropical world. A civilization that had spread throughout the continent in a vast cultural diaspora. Was this the end of European guns, germs, and steel in Africa? What would the future hold for this mighty tropical civilization. The Europeans had failed to settle Africa's land. This would become no North or South America. But Africa still had one great draw for the colonizing powers. Vast reserves of natural resources, copper, diamonds, gold. European conquest and the story of guns, germs, and steel would now enter a whole new age. In the late 1800s, in what is now the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the Belgians drove millions of native Africans from their villages, setting them to work gathering rubber mining copper and other minerals. Burning their homes behind them. Reducing their thousand-year-old tropical civilization to dust and ashes. Few were as brutal as the Belgians, but across the continent, millions of Africans were compelled to abandon a way of life perfectly adapted to the tropics and to labor for Europeans. To ferry Africa's natural wealth back to Europe, the colonizers turned again to their technology, building ever greater railroads. After more than half a century and the labor of tens of thousands, tracks of shining steel reached all the way from the Cape into the very heart of the tropics. constructed for Europeans to extract Africa's wealth. Built on the ruins of African civilization. All this time, I've been uncovering the trail of guns, germs, and steel across Africa. And even this train and the track it rides on lie at the heart of my story. These tracks are still in use, still fulfilling their original purpose. Trains travel from the southern tip of Africa into modern Congo and Zambia, ferrying back tons of copper and other minerals. But Africa today is no longer a continent of colonies. Its nations are free and independent. What place is there for my theory of guns, germs, and steel in modern Africa? Ndola, northern Zambia. The end of the line for Jared Diamond. 
Civil war in the neighboring Congo makes it too dangerous to travel the last few miles of this track. But even here, the reality of modern Africa is clear. I'm now in the center of the African tropics, and I'm in Zambia, one of the poorest countries in Africa and really in the whole world. The average annual income here is a few hundred dollars, and the lifespan, average lifespan of a Zambian is 35 years, so I myself have now lived nearly two average Zambian lifetimes. What goes through my mind here is what can history and geography and guns, germs, and steel tell us that would help us understand the plight of Zambia today? In modern Zambia, I see few signs around me of the great native civilizations that once flourished in tropical Africa. What I see instead is a country shaped by colonization. I see towns and cities that grew up next to the mines and railroads established by Europeans and built on the European model. What about the great forces that originally shaped this continent and its people? The forces behind its conquest by Europeans. Where are guns, germs and steel in modern Africa? In Zambia, malaria is endemic. It is the number one public health problem. And uh, when you look at the children particularly, when you go to a health facility, up, up to 45% of the children in the outpatient facility of the hospital will actually be presenting with malaria. Germs, one of Diamond's great forces of history, are still shaping the story of modern Zambia. Not just the recent scourge of AIDS, but also that ancient tropical disease that defeated Europeans, malaria. Malaria is now the number one killer of African children under five years old. This old register will just show you the picture of, of the number of deaths that could have occurred within the hospital. Most of them are children below five years. Yeah. Uh, one year, six months, three years, five months, one year. Most of them are really 